Hey guys, and welcome back to the Wednesday News Show. We've got a ton of climbing news for you. Couple climbing is back as well, but more importantly, Hugo is back. Yes. Boom, 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 boom. Thanks. Fireworks. <laughs> Little effects. <clears throat> Thanks very much for that. That was, that felt good uh, that you put me higher than everybody else. I mean, your, do we surprise. even know these people? Like, sure, they're strong <laughs> and climb hard, but like. But we don't know them. We, do we All of them. <laughs> Yeah, we wish we did. <laughs> um, yeah, but about comp climbing, the European Championships are underway in Moscow. The European Championships are underway, and during the speed qualifying event, history was made by Yulia Kaplina, setting a new female world record at 6.96 seconds. The women's speed climbing podium was an all-Russian affair, crowning Katerina Barashuki, European speed champion. For the men, Ukrainian Daniil Baldirev got the gold. Moving on to the bouldering. For the females, it was a tight battle, and Belgian climber Chloe Collier missed out on gold by one attempt too many to a zone, and Russia's Victoria Meshkova won. Stasha Gale missed the whole 2019 season due to an injury, but now she's back on the podium, taking the bronze. In the men's round, Slovenian climber Jenny Kruder, as usual, put up a show. He secured his win by flashing a slap boulder nobody else could do. Second place went to Sergei Luchensky and third to Nikolai Yarilovic, both from Russia. So that's what happened so far at the European Climbing Championships. And for all the inside scoops, let's go to Moscow to our foreign correspondent, Matthew Groom. <laughs> Hey, Teresa and Hugo, welcome to Moscow, Russia. The IFSC are broadcasting pretty much everything that happens here at this competition. I had to do the commentary even for the speed practice. So if you've been missing comp climbing, head over to that stream and check it out because there's more climbing than you could ever wish for. Let's chat about the actual climbing itself and the athletes taking part here today. Of course, those Olympic uh, tickets are up for grabs and Despite Jernie Kruder telling me that he doesn't think he's going to get one, he is gunning for it. He's trying to maintain, preserve his skin for that. And of course, we saw him win in the bouldering. We know he's on strong form. Something has happened to Chloe Collier <laughs> over this COVID break because she's come back beastly strong. She's looking calm, composed and a real contender for many medals. And of course, that combined final at the end of the week. COVID has changed things. It does feel different in terms of comp climbing. Everyone taking more precautions and there are new rules in place to protect the athletes, the spectators, the judges, everyone. But at the heart of it, climbing is still climbing and everyone is psyched to be here and put on a show for the people back at home. Athletes to watch out for, Ram Levin. He's been a little bit of uh, an inspiration, really. I bumped into him in the gym in the first day and he is steely and determined to prove to the world how good he is. He's up and coming, so keep an eye out for him. In the women, Molly Thompson-Smith looking great in the lead finals today, so don't care her off. Good performance in the speed and of course, the lead final coming up tomorrow, we're going to see how strong she really is. So loads of action that taking place. Hopefully you can stick with me if you want to come and hear me talk for hours on end. It's been a lot of fun and nice to chat with you guys. So yeah, that's my little summary of events. Lots of climbing to come and I'll see you guys back in Chamonix very soon. I think it suits him, the whole foreign correspondent gig. Uh, I felt uh, very CNN um, yeah. about it. You, you should know? wear like, like a helmet and like be in a bunker uh, with like guns like firing all over him. That's another show. Speaking of which, uh, not very good segue, but Belgian climber Sebastian Butt has been climbing hard in France. The Belgian climber has reported on his Instagram page that he has made an ascent of Super Krakenet 9A+, which is an Alex Magos route in saint lazare de Ventoux. The Belgian, who is more known for his big wall and multi-pitch adventures, first discovered the route back in February of this year, and after 50 days of working the route, finally managed to send last week. Bert has previously made the seventh free ascent of the nose, as well as completing the Alpine trilogy with Nico Favres this year. We managed to catch up with Sebastian after his impressive ascent. Yes, uh, Super Krakinet was uh, is a 15 meter route, like first climbed by Alex Megos, and it is really a nice route because like all moves are quite the same difficulty like there is no one single crux which is way harder than the others 
and like the hard part of this route consists just of accumulating the move. Uh, doing move by move is quite easy stuff, like I would say there is no more than 7A boulder or something. But when you do like <laughs> two moves or three moves, sorry guys, uh, it gets way harder and I would say I did like, uh, I, I just like, I put 30 tries where I just fell once in the route and like when I fell I just went directly to the anchor afterwards. So I was like, it's, it was the first time it happened to me as usually as I'm more like resistant and uh, stamina climber when I, when I can do the move, I can usually climb the whole route pretty fast. Uh, with Super Kakinet was not the case, like I had to struggle quite a lot. <laughs> Hopefully, like, I'm, it was a good place here, Saint Léger, to, to just give, give tries and tries. Like, you, you never get, get bored of this place. It's quite a magical one. Yes, yes, yes. I really wanted this year to improve my sport climbing level and like climbing a 90 plus was for me an obvious cho uh, choice like I'd climb a few 80 plus, 9A which has been like downgraded uh, and, and, and my first 9A in, um, in July with the speed, speed integral and so I really wanted to push further and I trained quite a lot for it Especially the last months, I spent all the all September in Belgium in order to train. Actually, I had a, a good crew with me. Like my crew was, was always like surrounded me, helping me with good like nutrition advices, as you can see. Like and yeah, that's why I'm trying <laughs> to hunt some some more cheap. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Sebastian. Uh, he's a personal favorite of mine, I think. Hey, I, I like his style. Yeah, he's got good style. He wears yeah. leggings. Pink leggings. Pink leggings. He also did the seventh ascent of the nose out of nowhere. Nobody knew who he was. And then he did an amazing interview in a hot tub during that film, which you can watch on Epic TV. I feel that's the way to go with interviews. Absolutely not, At it's least... terrible for audio. <laughs> no, but then the guest is relaxed. Please, and... if you send a video to us, never ever record your interview in a hot tub, it's a nightmare. In a sauna, is that better? <laughs> it might get in the way of the apparatus, probably. Oh. The equipment might get damaged. Right. Anyway, what's next? Uh, next stop is news from Italy, because Laura Rogora just keeps crushing it. Laura Rogora has made the second ascent of the Bau, a 9A plus in Arco, Italy. The route was previously freed by Stefano Ghisolfi, making it popular thanks to that savage bowing crux move. We caught up with Laura to hear all about this send. It took me six days of work and 17 tries in total. For the crux, I used the same beta as Stefano, and the bow is a uh, a strange move, but uh, I think uh, it's the easiest way to pass through the boulder. I was super happy to do this route uh, because uh, it has very particular moves and uh, it is a quite different style from the other route I made in the past because uh, it's more slabby and um, so the moves are more uh, risky and strange. Grazie Laura. Grazie uh, Laura. She's crushing it this year. Yeah, I mean. What else to say? Like, uh, honestly, yeah, what true. else to say? But like, I guess um, she didn't. Go, she's not going to Europe. Europe, European Championships in, in Moscow. Uh, the whole Italian team decided not to go. They decided not to go yeah. because of uh, COVID, obviously. COVID. But that's obviously meant that they can still go to the crag because they've got their little pro climber badges. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I think just so. Just go flash them to the, the security when, at the entrance <laughs> of the crag. Of a crag. Yeah, so, all right, I've got my pass. Yeah, fine. Let them in. Uh, and that means that they can go climbing still. I think the policemen in Arcos are all like climbers as well. So they must be like, sure. So they're definitely protecting the crag. Definitely, but yeah. like climbing ways. Little barrier. Right, you can go in. No, you're not pro. Are you a filmer? No. I mean, if we try to get in, we wouldn't get in. 
Anyway, next up, we've got report of the best weekend warrior in the world. Ete.nu has reported that German climber Roland Hemmetsberger has made the first ascent of Neuron, 9A+. The climber, dubbed the greatest weekend warrior of all time by yours truly, works full-time for Black Diamond, spending his weekends climbing hard, and he's previously climbed seven routes of 8C+, forward slash 9A or harder. So there you go. There's Roland, still crushing hard. Uh, I, you know, I'm a big fan of, of a weekend warrior, a guy that works full time. There's a lot of them out there. Like last time I, I said that he was the greatest weekend warrior of all time, there was a stream of comments below saying other people were, which oh. I openly would encourage people to, to do again because everybody knows that they're, they're strong weekend warrior pal. Uh, you and Matt are my strong, strong weekend warrior pals. No, you work close. so hard during the week and then you go out and you climb really hard during the weekend. <laughs> Do you think it's going to happen? A 9A. For yourself? Um, I mean, the other presenters are, are climbing 8Cs and 8As and stuff. What, Enrico. Yeah. <laughs> um, is it going to happen? I feel I have other four years to make it happen. True. And, you know, I want to be on a counter because I want points. Yeah, by so. which point it would have moved on to 10As. So. But, no. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, maybe not then. Uh, but anyway, we're moving on to Switzerland with some boulder news. 21-year-old Dutch climber Tiba Frome until last year never climbed anything harder than 7C. Now, with her recent trip to Magic Wood, she sent 8 8A boulders and Riverbed, an 8B slash V13. With this ascent, she's the first Dutch woman to ever climb an 8B boulder. So congrats, and I kind of stalked her on Instagram because she goes around not in a van, but in a bus. So oh, really? I feel she's doing bus life really well. Bus life. Bus life. How big is a bus? Like a picture big, is on screen. Is it like a big like a? It's a could, big school like school. Like 80s one of those bus. yellow ones, the American yellow ones. Uh, no, I think they're going around in a black one. Okay, that's cool. But still, that's very cool. Uh, next up, we've got a report of a young crusher in France. ATA.NU reports that French climber Loic Zahani has made an ascent of Demon, 9A plus forward slash B, in the organ climbing area in the south of France. The route which is steep and overhanging is a link up between a 9A plus route, Sacha Dananda, going into a route called Bronx, an 8A plus with a natural hard link up. At the age of 18 years old, Loic has already mustered an impressive 13 first ascents, 9A or harder. Damn. Yeah, pretty good, right? Yeah. <laughs> so Loic, we keep talking about Loic because he keeps coming up, but he's kind of, uh, I don't know, there's not a massive thing made about him, but I think hmm. personally he's the next kind of Seb Bois. Oh, right, right. So like French, going around France, putting up nine Bs. Just crushing hard and then very quietly he'll become one of the best climbers in the world. He's only 18. Did his first 9A like five years ago at the age of 13. <laughs> anyway, that Seb Bois um... mention was like a nice segue for your next story, right? Uh, yes, the 9B counter. We were going to do a new story in Cebuin, uh, but we yes. thought we'd just talk about it in the 9B counter because it was supposed to be a 9B and it's supposed to be France's first 9B, but it's been downgraded to 9A. It was put up 25 years ago. Akira? Akira. Akira. Um, so it doesn't make it into the 9B counter. And Seb and Lucien Martinez climbed Lucien it. Lucien Martinez and Seb both did it. Yes, but it Very impressive. But what I'm going to say quickly just more about it is that it's part of the Vintage Rock Tour. Now, the Vintage Rock Tour is uh, us. Us? It's about a filmmaker following Seb around France, climbing all the hardest routes. Uh, he's done biography. He's done massive like stuff in Verdun Gorge. He's done the first 8C. Uh, in uh, Bu Buix. Bu. Bu. Buix. Uh, whatever. And uh, yeah, so this is the fourth episode and it's coming out at the end of this year. Um, so we're super excited to see that. So that's why I wanted to mention it. Oh. Also, it is kind of news. It is. No, it's definitely news. We just news. didn't do a new story about it because we thought it was going to be the 9B counter, but it's not. Mm. Speaking of which, is it running in the 9B counter? 9A counter. And I already put it in on a new page. Laura, two points. Look at that. Uh, and she's at 10 points. So I feel... We can stop counting now. We need to make her a trophy. Uh, yes. Uh, 
So I don't know if you heard, uh, Theresa, but it's Black Friday this weekend. Is it? Did you realize? Uh, I didn't realize. Until I told you just then? Well, thank you for telling me. Well, Inside Scoop, guys, it's Black Friday this Friday, if you didn't realize. And Um, it's also Black Friday on the Epic TV shop. Yes. And it does mean, though, that there are some mahusive uh, discounts, right? Uh, Yes. I spotted some BD things, actually. Up to 50% off. Exactly. I think I could be a tally shopper. Uh, (laughs) Guy. Anyway, carry on, go. Black Diamond. (laughs) Black Diamond. uh, Yeah, pants, ropes, shoes, backpacks, and Go on, give me one. Give me one product, so don't be too vague. One product. Um, Black Diamond Forged Denim Pants. Forged Denim denim Pants. How much are they off? Um, They're 11% off. (gasps) But... (laughs) That's nothing. No, I... No, but this... (laughs) It's up to fifty percent off, and you choose an item that's got eleven percent off. That's the yeah, thing. because they're usually a hundred euros. So oh, how much are they now? The Eighty-eight. Oh, that's right. So it doesn't feel too bad buying them now. Okay, and they'll last, won't they? Uh, yeah, forever probably. Okay, I'm gonna go for the Nerona. The whole Nerona uh, collection, like you, is very impressively discounted. But one one in particular is the Nerona Fol- Folkatind. Down hooded jacket, men's last seasons started off at two hundred ninety nine euros. Okay. It's now one hundred seventy four forty four. Oh, one hundred seventy four forty four. So like forty one percent off, one hundred twenty euros off. Uh, it's in pink or green. The pink one is particularly nice, but the green one probably for guys might work better. Anyway, Norona is like super high quality stuff, and it's really good stuff. Like it just it, people think about it as more like a ski or snowboard type thing, mm. but actually, you get a nice down jacket for one hundred seventy five euros. It's going to last you forever. It's worth getting. That's yeah? it. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Nice. Right, medias. Normally this is the part where I come on and talk about medias. But you're on already. But I'm already, so I can just tell you. Um, first up, we've got a video from Johnny Dawes. Uh, Johnny Dawes came, uh, filmed for us a review. It's called, uh, it's about the Scarpa Ch- Chime- Chime- Chimera. Chimera? Chimera. Uh, anyway, here's a little clip. Do you know, in all honesty, I can't actually remember the first time that I did no hands climbing. But I think the first time I started using less limbs was when I hurt my hand and I was climbing with one hand. You know, I, I did um, Kirkus Corner, which is not exactly a slab, an asp. It's really that I climbed everything in the peak and I was looking for new ways of enjoying myself when I went out. <laughs> Scarpa Chimeris made from a mixture of goat and lion and they come out like that, which is surprising, isn't it? I like them. They're uh, more comfortable than the squeezy boots I've used before, which I've never really got on with. I mean, I've got strong feet because I've been climbing for ages and like slabs, and I was thinking, you know, you don't need this mechanical help from a boot. But um, I am actually would swallow my pride a little bit and say they are actually quite helpful. These worked pretty well straight out of the box, so I was quite surprised. At the fear of looking like I've been employed to promote these, um, I'd say they're really quite good. Okay. Let's relax a little bit. So, are you putting it to the test, no hands climbing, which I think is the ultimate test for a uh, climbing shoe? Actually, I think the ultimate test for that climbing shoe was that he was wearing a tweed jacket. At the same time as climbing? So, it, it, it just like, I don't know, complimented his whole climbing style. The color. The color. Color didn't really complement anything, but... Or the yellow <laughs> and the blue. Or the tweed. The tweed. It's the very tweed. Ge- country gentleman climbing. Anyway, um, check out the video. It's in the link, just in the link below. Uh, Johnny Doors is classic just just brilliant anyway uh next up we've got a uh, a film about a very own foreign correspondent in russia but in france a couple of years ago uh filming his journey to climbing his first aa here's a clip <sighs> oh, i was so scared <laughs> i scraped my boob <laughs> Oh, 
And that's it. Soon. Okay. So the whole thing feels tantalizingly close, like super close. It's just, it's just that margin. If I can get that arm straight and pull through that crux move, I reckon it's done. So it could go in one session, it could take a few. So I, I don't know. I don't think it's a fitness or a strength thing. I think it's just playing the numbers now. So I feel Matt did this on purpose. He left yeah. us with his 8A video and he went off to Russia and now we have to say nice things about it. His but, handprint <laughs> is left in the show. Yeah, but actually Enrico Veronesi the Italian presenter has climbed an 8C, so yeah, it's good there time, we go. isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> we finally get the edit out of Matt doing his 8A, yeah. and then Rico goes and does an 8C. Uh, but complimenti, and uh, but yeah, no, it was nice to see finally see this video of Matt doing this 8A. <laughs> A long time in the edit suite, definitely. Uh, right next up, coming of the week. Do you want me to sing it? You're going to sing it. You started singing it recently. But You've like, got a very nice voice. You're you can back. carry on. You're back. You should do the singing. Comment of the week. Thank you. There you go. Uh, what's yours? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Mine is lost. No, it's not. Okay. Mine is from Fa Francesco Sportelli. He said... Okay, this is in reference, actually, to Tribe. Backstory, backstory. Backstory, yeah. Okay. Backstory of this comment <laughs> is uh, because last week we spoke, I'm sorry, last week we spoke about tribe <laughs> and the great tribe. Um, and he suggests that it's E12 or E13. What about just skipping directly to F? Yes, very nice. When is it going to become F? Uh, when a third <laughs> ascensionist will confirm the grade of F. E brackets forward slash F. No, just close F. brackets. Just it has its own. Oh, it's just a letter by itself. F. I guess so. No other grade needed. Mm -mm. All right, fair enough. What's um, yours? Okay. Speaking about, uh, it's kind of in reference to, to, to tribe as well. Uh, Daniel Robinson says everyone's forgotten about echo wall, crying emoji. Oh. Um, Do you, I was reading up a little bit about echo wall before. It's a Dave McLeod route on Ben Nevis. Uh, big prow that he refused to grade as well. Okay. Because he didn't want to put all the work and all the effort and all the blah, 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 blah. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm kind of not, and I am. Because I guess it, I do understand that it is like annoying to kind of put, just put a number on all that work and all that expression and the fact that it's like taking all that work and stuff like that. Uh, but maybe I did read an article about it, about it and he said, you know, it's not very useful now that he's done the first ascent. It becomes more relevant when people do it, like make the second and the third ascent, and they can start talking about numbers and stuff like that. But he didn't want to regret it either. But he said it's the hardest thing he's ever done. Okay. And he's done E11. Right, Rhapsody. Yeah. So he thinks it's, it's harder than that. So therefore, e technically, you'd think it'd be E12, but then maybe it's E11 forward slash 12 bracket synonyms um, with a little cherry on top. Uh, plus minus. So, you know, it remains to be seen. But uh, yeah, thanks, Daniel, for that comment. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good one. Anyway, that's All it. All right. Uh, weekend. weekend. What are you going to do this weekend? I'm not, not sure. We're in lockdown. I might sneak off and uh, run around a bush or something like that. What about okay. you? Um, you going to do some sneaking? No. Clandestine no. climbing? Um, I'm, I'm too Swiss Head for torch. those things. You follow by the rules. Uh, or you could just go to Switzerland where there are no rules. <laughs> That's an idea, actually. Look at her eyes. She's guilty. Anyway, <laughs> thanks for joining us, guys. Thank you. See Bye. See you later. I won't be here next week. and be Matt. You looking forward to that? Uh, well, I kind of no. like his spot. <laughs> <laughs>